So it doesn't matter who you are, or it, but it doesn't matter what you do. For you to have wisdom, you have to fear the Lord. And if you have knowledge of the Holy Spirit, then of course that marks understanding. Okay, one of the things that actually marks people with the Holy Spirit is that they become more understanding. You become more patient in life, deva. Right? You become more driven in life. So that's one thing that I always want my students to uh, learn when it comes to the concept of your faith. Okay, so. <clears throat> Good evening, hashtag Mama D cares. Okay, hello, Chris Kasha. What happened to have shop out? Oh, nga, eh. nawawala yung shop out today. Okay, for Faith Pie, hello, Mama D. Good evening, good evening, my love. Okay, guys, please just comment. Okay, just comment on the Facebook page, comment on uh, the Zoom. Okay, if you have any questions on the discussion, we're going to be answering it. Okay, so in Jesus' name, this will be one of our most productive discussions ever at IFNG. Okay, let's start. Let's talk about reading. Hey! Who here does not like reading? Raise your hand. <laughs> I will be the first one to raise my hand. See, Sir Jeff and I. <laughs> Sir Jeff and I, when we talk about reading, some, there's something about the reading examination that is quite difficult. See, Mr. M even, right? Guys, yes, a majority of the students who are taking the examination, they do not like the reading. Believe me. But the good news about this one is you do not have to love reading for you to pass your examination. Basically, having a systematic technique and a, a vast amount of information would be enough for you to get the target score on the reading examination. So... <clears throat> A lot of students find reading onerous in a way that they face a myriad of challenges when doing the reading. Tonight, we will understand valuable techniques that you may apply on your reading test and to make it glib for you. Okay, word of the day is glib. Okay, so what do we mean by glib, Sir Joseph? Glib means smooth, okay? To make your reading experience smooth on the examination. And that is what we're going to be learning tonight. Okay, let's take a look. I have difficulty with reading from JT Rare. I love reading, but not, but not on the IELTS. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, me, ha ha. Pampatulog ko ang reading mother. Yes, no? Okay, yes, guys. Sometimes reading on the examination gets difficult in a way that if you guys do not know, during our time, circa 2009 okay, or 2010, the reading is one of the easiest questions or the easiest subtests of the IELTS. However, it was updated in 2015, with which it became one of the most difficult. Okay, If you're going to be asking me as your mama, what do I find the most difficult on the examination? Rank first for me is the reading. And then following that is the writing. And then, of course, listening. And then the last one is speaking. It depends on you. Because I am, what do you call this? Makapalang mukha ko naturally. Eh. Like, <laughs> I love speaking in public. I love interviews, right? If kung pwede nga ako sumali ng Miss Universe Philippines, why not? The first trans ginger to join <laughs> Miss Universe Philippines. Okay, so... <clears throat> What are the difficult aspects of reading? Before we even learn the techniques tonight, okay, what I would want you to remember, guys, is let's take a look at the difficult aspects. Let us understand what are the things that makes reading difficult. Okay, number one, the passages or the material. Sometimes it's too boring for the students. Sometimes the materials are way too long for the students in a way that they cannot fathom the idea of reading everything. Right. The good news about this one is you do not have to read everything on the examination. OK, <clears throat> that's tip number one from Mama for tonight. You don't have to read everything. If you are a student who loves reading everything for the examination, like you, you spend a lot of your time trying to understand everything on the test, mm -mm, that's not good. OK, that's not good on the examination. OK, what else? Time constraint. Hello, you only have 60 minutes. And included on the 60 minutes time is for you to it's for you to what? It's for you to transfer your answers to your answer sheets and for you to go over the items on the examination. So, of course, the time constraints can actually put unnecessary pressure on the students or the test takers. What else? Confusing item types. What am I talking about? You know these two. These are the evil twin, uh, evil stepsisters of Cinderella, right? If they were more evil. Okay, so this is the true false not given and matching headings. <laughs> I know that every time you hear true false not given, you become uneasy, right? Every time that you hear this, you'll be like, eh, 
purple's not given. Ew, matching headings. Ew, matching paragraphs. But don't worry, later on, I will teach you easier techniques for you to mind or for you to notice if that is true, false, or not given, and how to match the headings properly, okay? All right. <clears throat> so what else? Constant recognition of the materials. Okay, when you say constant recognition of the materials, it becomes difficult in a way that you would need to recognize important information from what is not. Okay, here, this is a, this is a proven fact. 70%, okay, or 70% or, uh, of your reading passage it does not have anything to do with the answers. No? Let me break it to you. 70% of, uh, of, of, of your reading passage does not have anything to do at all with the answer. So why read that 70%, right? So later on, I'll teach you how to do, uh, how to read just 30% of the passage and get the answers correctly. Okay, what else? Eliminating valuable information, okay? Eliminating and of course, um, minding valuable information and of course, identifying the answers make it difficult for the students on the reading test. Okay, to, to TFNG eviler, right? Q, baskil pag true false not given. <laughs> yes. <coughs> yes, yes. Bakit kasi kailangan pang mag-reading? I have difficulty with reading. Well, guys, unfortunately, reading is one of your uh, what you call, one of your prerequisites on the examination. So you would need to do that. By the way, guys, for those of you on face, for those of you uh, for those of you on Facebook, hashtag Mama D cares. There we go. And hashtag netodens. Hi. I love our new hashtag, right? Hello, Neto Dance. Mm. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> what are the vital techniques that you would need to master for you to get the answers properly? Okay, so first things first, guys, is identification. When we say identification, ya need to identify important information. When you are reading... Okay, when you are reading, Mom Gladys said, ouch, I love reading everything. <laughs> okay, so when you are reading, you need to identify, mm, is this one important? Is this, a, is this going to be doing something for me? Or it's just, it's an information that is quite repetitive and it will just confuse me. And if you feel that way, if you feel like the material right there is, is going to be confusing you, Okay, or if you feel like that material right there would be a little bit difficult for you to, uh, it would make it difficult for you to understand the passages, leave it be. Okay, leave it be. Uh, most likely that part right there is just placed there to confuse you on the exam. So leave confuse, confusing things behind. Okay, parang yung ex mo, di ba? Pag nakoconfuse ka niya, iwan mo, ganun lang yan, saring. Okay, so what else? Elimination. You would need to select information on the reading examination plus you would need to eliminate details that you think are the weakest. Okay, so if you feel like this one is weak, okay, eliminate it. All right. Systematic reading. Okay, systematic reading is what you will be learning tonight. If you are here and if it's your first time to join our live discussion here at IFNG, guys, know that systematic reading, the technique that I'm going to teach you is something that could help you really on your exam. And you can share this to your friends too. All right, now, <clears throat> answering all the questions with just understanding 20% of the passages. What, Sir Joseph? 20%? If there are 10 paragraphs, you only would need to understand two paragraphs in total. That's basically it. Okay, that's 20% of, uh, that's 20% uh, that, that's of 100. Okay, now, swift information gathering. Take note of the word swift, okay? The word swift, you would need to gather information quickly for you to be able to find the answers and for you to be able to remember the answers on the examination. Okay, so without further ado, that's just an intro. Let's move on to the techniques. Okay, it is true that you can finish the reading passage and answer the questions by just understanding 20% of the passages. Have this in mind. Do not read everything. That is the first mistake of the students with the reading, which makes it more difficult for them, okay? Have you noticed that they have placed the examination systematically? Yes, the IELTS examination, it's not placed accidentally, right? The day before your test, you're going to do your speaking examination, right? So the following day, you're going to be having your written test, which is the listening exam, the reading examination. The listening examination is the easiest. The reading is the most difficult. It's in the middle. And then you have the writing. So the purpose of the reading is that so when you go to the writing, okay, you don't have energy at all. 
right? So you would need to conserve your energy on the examination. All right, so just read 20% of the passages. I'll teach you on how to do that in a bit. Okay, <clears throat> so this is an examination, not leisure reading. Yung ibang estudyante enjoy na enjoy. Diba? When they go to the reading exam, they'll be like, eh, I love the passage. Oh my God. Look at that right there. Oh, ooh. And then you look at the clock. It's like, wow, 10 minutes left. I'm just on the passage one. Oh my Lord, where can I refile my exam? <laughs> It happens. I have had students who were so entertained by the thought of the passage that they forgot they are taking the examinations. They thought it was a leisure reading activity. Okay. So the keywords, the keyword matters. Okay. Or the keywords matter for subject verb agreement. You need to look at the question and find the keyword immediately. Some students tend to forget to remember the keyword, hence explaining why they are lost on the passages. Okay, so I will teach you on how to encircle and underline your keywords. But guys, okay, one of the things that I will teach you right now is that you don't have to encircle everything on the question. Okay, so what else, guys? <clears throat> Do not encircle too much, okay? This is one thing. This is a common mistake of the students is they are encircling keywords too much on the reading test that they forget all the words they have encircled. What is the use of encircling a keyword if you will not remember it anyway? Okay, so. You just have to encircle one to two of the keywords, okay? Now, on the question, uh, use, what, what are the useful keywords on the question? On the question, challenge yourself to find keywords like nouns, adjectives, verbs, and adverbs, okay? They will help you on the reading again, okay? If you're going to be looking for keywords, okay, you would need to look for the nouns, adjectives, verbs and adverbs because they will be helping you on the examination all right now let me let me sh uh, share my airplay right here okay hold on I, it needs a flog in what's a flog in i love flogging in things okay <clears throat> all right guys so let's take a look at this one let's do an encircling exercise okay let's have a look at this one okay again do not encircle too much because if you encircle and underline too much, you will not remember anything at all. Okay, you will not remember a thing. Okay, now let's take a look at the first question right there. Okay, let's take a look at the first question right there. Parang X mo lang, bibilugin ka, tapos bibilugin, tapos iiwan ka din, Char. <laughs> Gusto ko yun, Mom Gladys. Okay. So let's have a look-see at the first question right here, okay? The Parisian government thought of the Eiffel Tower as, okay? The Parisian government thought of the Eiffel Tower as, okay, so you would need to foresee things because if you're going to be encircling the word Eiffel Tower, I think that would become, uh, that would be, that would become important on the examination if you encircle that, right? Okay. And then Parisian government, guys, mm, I concur that this, this one would be repetitive, okay? You will, you will be seeing a lot of um, paragraphs on the examination which contains the word Parisian government. So you don't have to encircle Parisian governments because you might be confused. So the thing that I would encircle here would be the word thought. Oh, what happened to the circle? It's not a circle. Okay. So the first thing that I will be encircling here is the word thought and Eiffel Tower ass. There you go. So when you are encircling keywords like this one on the examination, my golly, it's going to be helping, helping you a lot, right? Okay, so you have encircled the word thought of the Eiffel Tower ass. Okay, so if I see this on the passage, thought of the Eiffel Tower ass. Okay, so what did the government thought of the Eiffel Tower as? There you go. Or you can even encircle just the word thought, right? Okay, what else? The person who broke the record is. Don't encircle the person anymore, but encircle the word broke. There you go. Instead of encircling the word person, because the word the person will be seen, okay? The word person will be seen over and over and over and over on the examination so you don't have to encircle the word person 
Now, if you encircled the word broke, yes, that is one of the uh, that one of the one of the important keywords right there. The word broke. Why? Because it is technically a verb. Right? He broke the record. So that is a verb. So it will be useful for you. Okay, what else? All right. So let's take a look at this one. The next one is paper towns are common terms for. Ooh, right? Okay, paper towns are common terms for. Of course, guys, if you see something like this, okay, you know that paper towns would be important, right? And it is terms for. Paper towns, terms for. There you go. That's a good keyword right there. So recapping everything. Thought Eiffel Tower ass broke the record. Paper towns, terms for. See, you're remembering details instead of trying to encircle everything. The worst thing that students do on the exam. Okay, here's a wrong way to encircle. 1997, government issued this. That's too much, okay? That's too much encircling and underlining. It's way too much. So you will not in remember details right here, right? Again, some students, they tend to do that on the exam. 1997, government issued this. That's too much, okay? So why don't you just encircle the entire thing if you're going to do that? <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at the next one. In 1997, the government issued this, okay? So uh, 1997 issued. There you go. Those are our keywords. Now, next one, guys, is after the Constitution was passed, what happened to K.K. Dorright? Dog right, door right. Okay, after the Constitution was passed, what happened to KK Dorright? Okay, so after the Constitution was passed, what happened to KK Dorright? I'm just going to be encircling this word here. Okay, Constitution, you will see it over and over again. Whereas past, okay, that's one thing that that is a that is a that is something that marks the time that it happened, okay. And then what happened to KK Dorright? Because KK Dorright, guys, you might see him or you might see this person over and over on the exam. The wrong thing to do when you are encircling an underlining keyword is to underline common terms like this one, okay. KK Dorright, let's say there are seven. Parts in there with which you saw the name of KK Dorright, you will be confused, right? Whereas if you have encircled the word past and what happened, that's the time that you will find the answer, okay? Again, do not encircle too much on the examination, okay? So yung ibang estudyante, ganito, oh, when they encircle things, oh, ooh, 25 years ago, children, London, something, something, right? They tend to do that, playing something. Oh my gosh, how will you be able to find the answer? If your work looks like that, okay? You have to remember, guys, the reading is visually unappealing already as it is, so you don't have to overly encircle details, okay? That's one thing, okay? Just encircle two to three, two to three uh, keywords on the examination. Okay, so again, useful keywords are nouns, adjectives, verbs, and adverbs. All righty, so what's next? Remember, when finding the keywords, do not encircle the repetitive words in the passage. Encircle the unique one. Okay, this is another life-saving tip on the reading examination. When you are trying to find the keywords, do not encircle the repetitive words in the passage. Encircle the unique one. Let's take a look at this one, guys. A trunk shot camera shows what in a pro photograph? A trunk shot camera shows what in a photograph? Which one? Right here. <coughs> Encircle kaya the whole passage na lang, diba? Okay, which one right here? But pag si mother nagtuturo ng reading, feeling ko ang galing ko. O, oh, diba, Marge? <laughs> you know, my students tend to say that too in class. Like, you know what, Sir Joseph? Every time you teach us, I understand everything. Like, I'm really good at everything. But when I do it, oh my God, something happened to me. I think I may have knocked my head off. On the, way to, on the way to school. <laughs> okay. So yes, let's take a look at this one, guys. Let's take a look at this sample sentence right here. Okay. A trunk shot camera shows what 
in a photograph. What do you think is the keyword there? What's the keyword? Come on, guys. A trunk shot camera shows what in a photograph? Okay, shows what? Shot. Okay, what else? Okay, there you go. The keyword here, guys, is not photograph. Okay, it's not photograph because there, most likely you will see the word photograph a hundred of hundreds of times on the entire passage. Okay, the keyword for this one is trunk shot. There you go. That word is unique, right? It makes you think. You'll be like, oh, what's trunk shot, right? Okay, so you need to find the you need to find what do you call this? You need to find the unique keyword so as to ensure that you are remembering details and the unique keyword here is the word trunk shot because most likely the word trunk shot will just appear once or twice on the entire passage so it's easier for you to recognize the answers there you go do not encircle the word photograph believe me you will see it a hundreds and hundreds and thousands of time on the examination so you might be confused if that happens. There you go. Good job, guys. Okay, so follow the flow of reading, okay? If there is one thing that I would want you to focus on tonight is that this flow of reading has been proven to be effective on the reading examination, okay? So what is the flow of reading, Sir Joseph? All right, so first things first. Read the question first. I know you have heard of this before, right? Read the question first, but we disagree with reading the question first. If you read the questions first, where will you be looking for, for where will you be looking in the passage anyway, right? It will be a waste of time to read the question and not know where to look at, okay? Oh my gosh, Sir Joseph, for all this time, I have been reading the questions first to familiarize myself with the content of the examination. No. No. Okay. Do not read the questions first, because if you read the questions first, where will you look at in the passage, right? The examination now, maybe in 2006, 2007, that's applicable because they are going to be placing the questions from the top to the bottom, right? From the top, make it drop, right? But now guys, they do not place it that way anymore, right? It's randomly placed on the, on the question. So, what should you do first? Instead of reading the questions first, here is the flow, okay? First is, I want you to familiarize yourself with the theme of each paragraph, okay? You read the first and the last sentence first. You get the theme. You get the gist, uh, the gist of each paragraph so as to ensure that you know what you will be, uh, what, what, you are, what you will expect from the passage. What else? After that, that's the time that you're going to be reading the questions, okay? And then encircle your keywords. After reading the question, this will usually click in, onto your mind. Mm, I think I may have read that on the on paragraph B. Oh, see, you know where to look at, right? You know where to look at if, if that happens, right? Okay, and this will usually point you to the passage so you would need to find the keyword in the passage right there, okay? So again, first step is to familiarize yourself with the theme. So when we say familiarization with the theme, you would need to read the first and the last sentence of each paragraph first, okay? Each paragraph, not each passage. And then after that, guys, you go to the question, encircle your keyword. The keyword will always ring a bell in your head. Mm, Joseph, I think you may have encountered that on paragraph C. Okay, I'll go to paragraph C. There you go. That's more systematic, right? Instead of reading the question, not knowing where to go, right? And then <clears throat> after that, you would need to find the keyword. If you have found the keyword, stop. The answer is within the same sentence. It's not going to go far away from the question itself, okay? If you have found the keyword, stop. The answer will be within the same sentence. And then write down the answer immediately. Okay, do not save it for later. Some students tend to do this. Oh, I found the answer here. Let me just find the answer to the next one. Okay, then you found the answer to the next one. Okay, let me just find the answer to the next one. And then you did not write it down onto your question paper or your answer sheet. So what have you? Once, you are, once you're already trying to recap everything, oh, where did I find it? I think I'm lost. I'm lost, baby girl. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. All right. So wait. Uh, view from the inside. All right. A trump shot is a view from the inside, guys. Okay. Thank you so much, Sir Jeff. Okay. Enjoy duty, Sir Jeff. Please take care. Okay. Chef Pagalinan paas sa Zoom kung pwede mag-underline or encircle sa question pag computer-based. Thanks. Ingat, Sir Jeff. Actually, you have the highlighting tool. You have the highlighting tool on the computer-based test. So you can use that. That's even better. Right? The highlighting tool. You just click the mouse and then release it. And then there would be, uh, what do you call this? There would be a... Uh, there would be a highlight. Uh, there would be there would be a highlight on the sentence. Even better. Okay, so let us now take a look at this one again. Going back to my screen share, guys. Okay, let's try to familiarize ourselves with the themes of the passages. Okay, just real quick. Okay, so <clears throat> let's take a look at this one. Activities for children. Okay, activities for children is the title of the question. Okay, so let's read the first sentence first. All right, what's the first sentence? 25 years ago, children in London walked to school and played in parks and playing fields after school at the weekend. Okay, so it's talking about children 25 years ago, playing in parks and at the weekend. And then the last sentence, If children continue to be this inactive, they will be storing up big problems for the future. Ooh, so it's safe to say that this passage right here is talking about children's inactivity. Okay, it's talking about children's inactivity and what they do in the past, okay? All right, so what else? Let's move on to the next passage, okay? <clears throat> in 1985, Professor Armstrong headed a five-year research project into children's fitness, okay? So that's Professor Armstrong, okay? So Prof Armstrong. Okay, and then let's take a look at the last sentence right there. Last sentence is high levels of cholesterol Excess body fat and inactivity are believed to do increase the risk of coronary heart disease. Okay, so it's talking about coronary heart disease. Disease due to inactivity. Wow. Sir Joseph, what are we doing here? We're summarizing the, we're, we're getting the theme of the passage itself, okay? I want you guys to look at the theme of the passage because this can help you later on once we are, uh, what do you call this? Once we are already looking at the passage itself, okay? All right. Okay, so what else? Yes, you can highlight. You may highlight Karen Gale, my love, on the, the CDILs. Okay, what else? Next one, physical education is under pressure in the UK. Most schools devote little more than 100 minutes a week for its curriculum time, which is less than many other European countries. Okay, so it's actually talking about physical education in the UK. PE in the UK right there. Okay, and then what's the next one? Let's go to the last sentence of this one. Okay, hmm. Ang haba ng last sentence mo. Okay, there you go. So Professor Armstrong, who presented the findings at the meeting, noted that since the introduction of the national curriculum, there have been a marked fall in the time devoted to PE schools with only a minority of pupils getting two hours per week. Okay, it's talking about Armstrong's statement. Okay, it's talking about Armstrong's statement right there. And apart from that, guys, it's talking about uh, minority of pupils getting minority, getting two hours of exercise per week. Oh, oh my gosh, Sir Joseph. Now we're, we're summarizing everything. Yeah, before you even read the question, you summarize it. The problem when you read the question first is that you might get what they call this interpretation. Okay, you might, you, might, you might misinterpret it. Okay, I think we have a question here. 
So is it possible to highlight words in questionnaires? Yes, you may, actually. You may. <clears throat> okay. As former junior football international, professional, uh, Professor Armstrong is a passionate advocate of sport. Okay. We're talking about his sport background here. Of who? Professor Armstrong right there. And the last sentence is, he added that children need to have opportunity to take part in a wide variety of individual partner team sports. Okay. Sports background of Professor Armstrong and the variety of sports. Okay. There we go. So what else? Okay. Hold on. We have a PM here at Zoom. Okay, sir, do you discuss this way at Elite Intellect? Do, are you always using that technique? Yes, actually, I use this one to highlight things. Actually, I note down things. I note down things. Later on, I'll show you a sample lecture right there. Okay, the good news, however, is that few small companies and children's activity groups have reacted positively and creatively to the problem. Okay, it's, talk about, it's talking about companies reacting. There we go. Now we get the gist of the entire thing, right? Okay, moving on. <clears throat> Uncoordinated, loud, excited, and emotional children provide raw comedy. Okay, it's talking about raw comedy. All right. And then, any cardiovascular exercise is good option, and it doesn't necessarily have to be high intensity. It's talking about any type of cardio. Okay, and then what's the next one? 90% of children don't like team sports, says company director Jillian Gale. Okay, so 90% of students Okay, and then a prevention survey found that children whose parents keep in shape something something weighs healthy body weight themselves. Okay, so parents impact Later on, look, you will be surprised that you will find the answers to the question by just this thing that we're doing. Okay, and then uh, last sentence for this one is now kids, uh, now kids in obese families are expending, expending 200 calories day, a, a day in physical activity says Lipschitz. What a name. Lip shits. Incorporate more movement in your family life. Park away from the stores of the mall stairs instead of something. Walk to nearby friend's house instead of driving. Okay, so this is um, lip shits. What's that name about? Okay, lip shits suggestion. Lip shits is suggestion. Okay, so... <clears throat> Let's have a look, see at the questions, really. Believe me, your questions will click, okay? So question number one, we're going to be matching this one, okay? So let's take a look at the first one. Health and living condition of the children. Okay, so we're talking about the health and living condition of the children. So health, living condition of the children. If I remember it correctly earlier, there was a passage right there which is talking about the health and living of and living condition of the children nowadays okay and if i go back up right here i think it could be seen on passage a okay children's inactivity and what they do in the past okay so <clears throat> today they are usually driven to school by their parents anxious about safety and spend hours glued on television screens of computer games meanwhile community playing fields are being sold off property developers something something this change in lifestyle has sadly meant greater restrictions on children okay so look at that sir health and living conditions of the children what are the living conditions right there here usually driven at school Parents are anxious about safety and spend hours glued to television screens or computer games. There you go. That's a living condition, right? If we continue to be this inactive, they'll be storing up a big problem in the future. That's the health right there, right? So 
I concur that the answer for this one is passage A. All right, let's take a look at the next one. Health organization monitored physical activity. Health organization monitored physical activity. Um, Sir Joseph, I think we saw earlier a passage right there with which there is the health organization. Yes, I can remember that. Let's go back to our passages. Let's find health organization. Live shits, parents impact, raw comedy, any type of cardio, something, companies reacting, sport background, variety of sports, Armstrong statements, something, PE in the UK. Okay, let's have a look see at this one, shall we? In 1985, Professor Armstrong headed a five-year research project into the children's fitness. The result published in something something survey, which monitored something something percent of 41 percent of boys already exceeded safe cholesterol levels. Children, American Health Foundation. Were we able to find the answer? I concur. Let's go back. Health organizations monitored physical activity. Yes, it is the American Health Foundation who did that. So we're going to be answering it and making it paragraph B. Okay, so look at that. Keyword is health organization, and then they monitored. Comparison of exercise time between UK and other countries. OMG, Sir Joseph, I think we saw that. I remember that quickly. I remember that really. It is the comparison of exercise between UK and other countries, right? The comparison. Okay, let's go back. Lip sheets, parents impact, raw comedy, any type of cardio, 90% of students, companies reacting. Sports background, variety of sports. Armstrong's treatment, my minority, two hours per week. Okay, physical education is under pressure in the UK. Most schools devote little more than 100 minutes a week in the curriculum time, which is less than many European countries. Ooh, let's look at that, right? Physical education is under pressure in the UK. Most schools devote little more than 100 minutes a week to it, it, to it in curriculum time, which is less than many other European countries. UK here, okay. UK here, it, what it, was it compared to other countries? Yes, technically it was compared. Okay, so look at that. What's the answer? It is paragraph C. Nakita nyo na kung gaano kadali hanapin ang information. If you know where to look at, right? If you know where to look at, instead of reading that and then darting it like a blind person, it's easier for you to remember if you're familiar with the theme of the passages. The next time you do reading, read the first sentence and the last sentence first, and then you read the passages and you read the questions. Okay, last one. <clears throat> Wrong approach of school activity. Wrong approach. Our, our clue here would be the word wrong approach of school activity. Hmm, I think I saw it, a physical education something, something below earlier. Okay, let's, if I can remember it correctly. Although the government has poured millions into beefing up sports and community, there is less commitment to it as part of cram school curriculum. This means that many children never acquire the necessary skills. <laughs> many children never acquire the necessary skills to thrive in team games. <laughs> Cram school curriculum, mistake of schools. Are they the same? Yes, they are. Look at that. We were already again able to find the answer by just looking at this one. What's the wrong approach? It is crammed. What's, what's representing the school, Sir Joseph? It is the word curriculum. Okay, look at that, right? It's easier to do the reading again if you know where to look at, okay? That's what I always tell my students. It's pretty much easier, really, to see everything if you know where to look at. And the next time that you do your reading, you read 
uh, you familiarize yourself with the theme of the questions first. And then after that, you read the questions. After that, it will point you. It will click into your head. Find the keyword. The answer is always near. Write down the answer immediately. Ah. <laughs> Amazing, right? It's easier to do the reading, the reading this time because you know what to do. Okay. Yes, before I used to read the question first. Okay. Don't get me wrong. Before I used to read the question first. However, I did realize that um, it's confusing me. Apart from it's giving me my own interpretation from the passages, right? What, what, it, what also gives me is a headache because I don't know where to find the details. So next time, read the first and the last sentence first. Okay. Moving on to the next tip. Remember, in circle keywords in questions, three questions at a time. It is humanly impossible for us to remember keywords of five items. Uh, do it in a manageable way. Some students, they tend to encircle keywords for five items. You cannot remember that. Okay, so encircle keywords three items at a time or even one item at a time. That would be realistic. If it only takes you 20 seconds to find the answer, if you know where to look at. All right, it's an... It's a nice mentoring, sir. Hey, thank you so much, Marlon. Okay. <clears throat> so what else? Now, uh, see how it is now easier to remember. Now, let's take a look at your favorite, which is true, false, and not given, also known as true, false, refile. Char. <laughs> Most often than not, on the examination, you might encounter true, false, not given items, which are 10 to 15 items. Really, the least number of true, false, not given items that I have seen in, a, in an exam question is 10, 10 items. Yes, it's virtually impossible for you to encounter only five items of true, false, not given. You are extremely blessed if that happens. However, guys, uh, I, I know that some students can relate here. Some students can relate here at true, false, not given. You know how to find true, right? You know how to find true, okay? But when it comes to not given, okay? And when it comes to, when it comes to not given and when it comes to, what do you call this? When it comes to false, ah, you get technically totally, utterly confused, right? The most confusing and exasperating part of the reading, correct, rare. There you go. So let's take a look at, the task for true, false, and not given. The task for this one is to see if the information matches. Uh, is the opposite? Is it the opposite or is it missing? Okay. Remember the magic three words here: match, opposite, missing. Again, match, opposite, missing. If the information matches, then automatically that is true. If that is the opposite, that is false. If something is missing, if something is lacking, automatically that is not given. Okay? So you don't believe me here? I'll show you examples, guys. <clears throat> Five items, TFNG per passage. My God, see 15 items in total? I mixed up my false and not given every time. Okay, don't you worry. Chris, I will teach you on how to um, recognize them. Let's talk about true items first, okay? Okay, when we say true, words will be paraphrased to confuse you, okay? When that is a true item, the first thing that would click into your mind is, um, why is this paraphrasing too much? Okay, and then if you match the question and the passage, the meaning is basically the same, okay? If you match the question and the passage, they are matching exactly. However, it's just paraphrased. Okay, so you don't believe me? Here we go. Okay, look at the question here. People in Bulgaria value their ancient traditions. People in Bulgaria value their ancient traditions. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. Customary practices are revered in Bulgaria. Customary practices are revered in Bulgaria. You just saw the word revered right there. And if you don't know the meaning of the word revered, it's value. Okay, it's value, it's respected, is at the utmost importance, right? So if you're going to be looking at that, guys, no? Customary practices, ancient traditions, they're the same. Revered, valued, they're the same. Bulgaria, people of Bulgaria, they're the same. What have you? It's true, right? It's true. Okay, so it's paraphrased. 
severely. However, the question still shows you, and the question in the passage still shows you a match on the information. Okay, what else? I'm so excited every time I discuss triples that even, believe me. Because after this, a, st a lot of students, really, they message me, Sir, you know what? I have applied the technique. My gosh. Oh, diba? I got confused. <laughs> <coughs> All right. <clears throat> Let's take a look at the next one. When planning a trip, people need to look into securing their valuables. Again, when planning a trip, people need to look into secure you securing their valuables. Okay. Appending commodities must be focused when people prepare for holidays. Appending commodities must be focused when people prepare for holidays. <laughs> Let's match information here. Appending, securing, they're the same. Okay. Valuables, commodities, they're the same. Okay. What else? Look into, focused. They are the same. Okay, what else? Trip, holidays, they're the same. So when that is a true item, guys, okay, when that is a true item, what I would want you to remember is that the words are going to be paraphrased severely to confuse you. However, if you're going to be looking at the meaning, it's just technically totally, utterly the same. Let me just monitor my audio, guys. Okay, so yeah, look at that. Ooh, sorry, Joseph. Now I know that if there if there is intense paraphrasing, does it mean that if I encounter intense paraphrasing on the examination, it means that that that, that item could be true? Yes, <laughs> because the number one technique that the number one technique that the IELTS does to confuse the students, okay, is for them to paraphrase the words for you to think that it's a false, even if it's true. And they're going to be using big words for you not to know what that means. Okay, so look at that. All right, so moving on to false. Okay, excuse me, guys. Give me three minutes or five minutes. Let me just drink water. Let me call on Mom Zaya first, okay, because my throat is getting a little bit... Um, uh, dry. So, Mom Zaya, what are the other techniques hi, that you sir. can give them for reading? Hi, everyone. So, hi, I'm Zaya from Elite. Now, it's no doubt that reading is one of the hardest parts of the exam. Personally, when I was studying for it, it is my worst nightmare. Kumbaga before, but um, what I did before is I would do drills. So, um, every single day. So usually, so usually your exams will start at 9 a.m. So what I did was physical conditioning. Now, every single time, so that would be from Mondays to Saturdays because I allot Sundays for rest. Now, I would undergo um, all the three exams, namely um, listening, reading, writing, and I would do the speaking in the afternoon when my uh, friends are available. Now, I really... Place my placed myself in a time pressured environment, and I have to do it nine a.m. sharp, so that my brain will be used to it. You should do that as well because um, it pays to have endurance first and foremost, and also not only um, uh, you shouldn't care about mostly in the first few um, weeks. You shouldn't care about your scores. You should um, try your best to know why you got it wrong. Okay, especially for true false not giving. There is just that one word that would um, cause you to make mistakes. Now, I want you to find out why you got it wrong and how you can um, prevent that in the future, first and foremost. And also, one thing that I would like to um, point out, you should read the instructions, first and foremost, because it will be written there, whether um, how many words, you need to write and a lot because those things matter. Um, also, uh, I would read different various articles, not only for me to enhance my speaking, but also for me to augment my speaking uh, speed because it is also imperative for you to be able to, to finish all of these in time. Now, because I um, place myself in that certain time pressured environment, in the exam, I was able to finish all of the tests 
within 30 minutes. Now you have to do that as well because it will a lot it will give you so much time to review everything. And lastly, do not overthink everything. Okay? You have to base uh, to base your um, answer on the text. Now, sometimes there are academic articles that are somehow related to healthcare, um, namely uh, sciences, technology, brain waves, and a lot. If you have an idea on the topic, do not um, argue with what's um, written there. You should base it only in the passage and what, and not what you know personally, because that would be the greatest pitch, pitfall that he would do there if you do that so it's a no-no i think um mother dragon is now ready let me give back the floor to sir joseph thank you so much Zaya. yes actually what Zaya said there is actually really true when you have an idea about the passage don't argue with it okay some students they will be like oh this is what i know about the passage this is what i know about this and that and this and that and then what have you they end up confusing they, they end up confused on the examination so yeah just read the passage don't overanalyze don't overthink the more you overthink the less you will get the answers believe me okay now let's go to false <laughs> energy brought to you by kaping barako with buhok ng kilikili ng tikbalern <laughs> Oh, I think my voice may have been too loud because my lavalier is close to my throat, you know? So if you hear me swallow, you know. Okay, so <clears throat> let's take a look at this one, okay? What about false, okay? So for false items, guys, some words are the same. <laughs> Again, to confuse you, if that isn't true, some words will be paraphrased, but for false items, some words are the same for you to think, oh, they're matching, right? But if you match the information, it is completely different in meaning, okay? The meaning will be changed if you match the information. It will be different, okay? So what do I mean by this one? Sir Joseph, may I see an example? Here we go. Okay, let's take a look at the question right here. Okay, the loss of the study was written by Martha Wiseman. Again, the loss of the study was written by Martha Wiseman. Okay, now if you're going to be looking at the passage right there, let's have a look, see at the passage, okay? For the passage right there. Okay, hold on. Let me just read <clears throat> more accurate rather than reading the question first always make me confuse more thank you oh there you go Nij. thank you omg triple's not given you are such heaven sent sir i only got six in my reading sub this i needed seven so heartbreaking it's okay my love it's okay all right it's okay you can do it all right just apply the techniques that you're going to be learning tonight okay the loss of the study was written by martha wiseman okay now let's take a look at the passage okay Martha Wiseman was inspired to write about the statute of the study. Oh my gosh, law and statutes are Joseph. They're the same. Martha Wiseman, she's the same. So what makes this false? What do you think makes this false, guys? Come on, come on. Let's work on those neurons tonight. What makes this item a false? Okay, let's go, let's go. Type in your answers right there. What makes this item a false item? Okay, there we go. Good job. Good job, everyone. Okay, good job. Yes, yes, you got it correctly, right? Look at that one. On the question, she has written the studies law, right? But on the passage, she's just inspired, okay? Written, she already took an action, whereas on the other one, she's already technically, utterly, totally inspired. So it's different, right? It's different. The first one is she has already done the action, which is she has written, okay? But on, on the next one, she's just inspired. So if you're going to be looking at that, that is a false item. Aha! Uh -huh. Good eye, everyone. Good eye. Okay. Okay. Now, next one. <clears throat> Professor Ni Nigan. <laughs> what the? <laughs> Who is Professor Ni Nigan? Oh my God. 
gosh. Okay. Professor Ni Nigan approved the study's law for the researchers. Again. Professor Ni Nigan approved the study's law for the researchers. The loss of the studies was, de was deprecated by Professor Ni Nigan. Okay. Professor Ni Nigan approved the study's law for the researchers. The loss of the study was deprecated by Professor Ni Nigan. <clears throat> Come on. Let's go. I'll test the guards on the exam. Right? Okay. Approved and deprecated their antonyms. <laughs> Approved and deprecated their antonyms. Okay. Approved is to go your okay signal. Deprecated is to reject. There you go. So they are the direct opposite of one another. Right. So that makes it a false item. It's a false item. Okay. <laughs> so now. Now, reading true, false, not given is now easier, right? Right? Okay. So you have to remember if that is false, okay? They're the opposite, okay? Or the context changes significantly. Some words will be the same. But for true, some words will be paraphrased, okay? And then uh, uh, they, can match uh, they can match importantly. Now, let's take a look at the next one. Your favorite, not given. The common mistake of the students with not given is they only focus on the internet technique. Okay? They only focus on the internet technique. What is that? I cannot find it anywhere else in the passage. That's a not given. <laughs> right? When you when you when you are reading it, you'll be like, oh my gosh, I cannot find it on the I cannot find it anywhere. So I concur that that is a not given right there. Right? That happens to students. Guys. Some words are paraphrased or the same for not given, but there is something missing or lacking, okay? Unfortunately, when something is missing or lacking, students tend to pull the trigger towards false. No, the word that was missing was not given. Gets na? Kapag merong nawawala, guys, if something is missing, Okay, or if there is a new information that was added, that information is not given. By definition, it is. Okay, when you cannot find anything, okay, when you cannot find anything or when something is missing, that's not a false, okay, because the context was not changed. Something was just not given. So that's not a false, okay? I didn't know that technique bother. I should have done that. Look at that, right? Okay, so what's usually missing for not given are nouns verbs adjectives and adverbs okay or basically you cannot find it anywhere some students they tend to focus on that like the definition of um, the definition of not given for some netodens is that oh uh, well it's it cannot be seen somewhere it was not given in the passage no the definition of not given is that word or two words were not given okay what do i mean let's take a look <clears throat> Ancient civilization focuses on industrial and capital sciences. Ancient civilization focuses on industrial and capital sciences. Commercial and resources along with innovation were the focuses of the ancient civilization. Ooh, ooh, well, let's take a look at this one. Ancient civilization focuses on industrial and capital sciences. Commercial and resources along with innovation were the were the focuses of the ancient civilization. Let's match information. Um, ancient civilization, check, okay. Industrial, commercial, check. Resources, capital sciences, check. There's a new word here that was added on the passage, which is innovation. Innovation was not given. Again, industrial, commercial, they're the same. We have capital, resources, they're the same. Innovation, there are only two information here. Here you have three. So the third one was not given. Okay, if something was added, okay, if something was missing from the question or the passage, that's automatically not given. Not a false, okay? Not a false. Okay, there we go. Now, let's take a look at the next one right there. Oh, my gosh. 
Okay, we should always focus on the question so confusion will not arise. Correct. You always focus on the question so that you will not get confused. Okay, so look at that, right? If you, if you are counting the details, right? Let's say Joseph, uh, in a simple light, Joseph, Mom Gladys, and Zaya were uh, with Mr. M were live. Okay, Joseph, Mom Gladys, Zaya with Mr. M were live. Okay, and then on the passage you saw, Joseph, Mom Zaya, Mom Gladys, Mr. M, and Sir Jeffrey were live. So is there somebody there that was not given? Yeah, it was Sir Jeffrey. There you go. So yeah, that is not given, guys, okay? This is not false. I'm so sorry, okay? If you have learned it that way, I am so sorry, but mama is going to break to you the truth, even if it breaks your heart. No? Yes. No? Okay, so what else? Anthony Marshall, a German scientist, studied about the cosmos. Anthony Marshall, a German scientist, studied about the cosmos. An award-winning German scientist, Arthur Anthony Marshall, researched about the cosmos. Let's match the verb. Studied, researched, they're the same. Cosmos, they're the same. German scientist, the same. Anthony Marshall, the same. Oh my gosh. Now, is there something new that was added in the passage right there? Is there something new that was added on the passage right there? I need this lecture. Thanks, Mother D. Tomorrow I will. Please post this on FB page. You got to go to work. Okay. No problem, Jomel, my love. Okay. Huh? Award winning. Where did that come from? Right? The word award winning, where did that even come from? Okay. So that's one thing. Right? That's one thing that marks it as a not given. Is that there is a new information that was added right there. <laughs> ay yeah, Sir Joseph. So if you have been doing this, that if something was added and then you're writing down false, and once you look at the answer key, it's a not given, that's the explanation. That's the explanation, my love, okay? Is that it's not actually false, it is not given. You have to remember to put not given in a nutshell is that there is something lacking, there is something missing, something was added. There you go. It's usually a noun, a verb, an adjective, or an adverb it will automatically qualify it to become a not given, okay? You do this later, once I'm done, right? Once I'm done with my discussion, okay? Once I'm done. Oh, well, you think that technique is amazing? You wait for, you wait for the matching headings, okay? You, you, will, you will see matching headings in a different light after that. Okay, so another one. Neo-functionalism is a theory of regional integration which downplays globalization and reintroduces territory to the governance. Neo-functionalism is a theory of regional integration which downplays globalization and reintroduces territory to the governance. Okay, now, introduction of territorial claims and minimizing along with extirpating globalization to the government is the definition of the theory of neo-functionalism. Okay, downplays, minimizing, extirpating. Is that a new word? Did you see destroying there on your question? The definition of extirpating is destroying. Did you see destroying there? Did you see that? Did you see? Did you see the word extirpating right there? No, you did not. It's a new information that was added, right? Minimizing, extirpating, minimizing, you can match that to downplay. Downplay and minimizing, it's the same, right? Introduction of territorial claims, regional integration, it's the same. However, if you look at the word extirpating, destroying, obliteration, uh, it was not given on the question. So that, my, my dear lovies, is automatically qualified to be a not given. Wow, Sir Joseph. Oh my gosh. Now I understand not given more. Next time, if I see something new, then that's not false. It's not given. Yep. That's the technique. If you see something new, that's not false. That's not given. Okay. So yes. Oh, before we move on to matching headings, guys, let me just congratulate the pastors of this week. And 
I'm so excited to be announcing something. Okay, before we move on to um, matching headings. Okay, so congratulations to Carl Joseph Martinez, nurse from Qatar, 9.0 in reading, 8.0 in listening, 8.0 in speaking, 8.0 in writing. Wow, good job, guys. Okay, what else? Haley Kate Munoz, nurse in the Philippines, 9.0 in listening, 8.0 in reading, 7.5 in writing, and 8.0 in speaking. Cara Jane De La Rosa, nurse in the UAE, 8.0 in speaking, 7.5 in writing. Anthony San Pedro, medical technologist in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, 8.0 for speaking. Okay, Elaine Joyce Bulawit, nurse in the Philippines, 8.0 in speaking. Carlito Jose Antolin, nurse in Canada, 8.0 in speaking. Godencio Pablo Fuerza, nurse in the UAE, 7.5 in speaking. Nina, Nina Cruz de Meza, nurse in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, 7.5 in speaking. Niana Cruz, yung kambal? Niana Cruz de Mesa, the nurse in Singapore, 7.5 in the twins. Hey, super twins. Congratulations, mga anak ko. Okay, and Jasper Mabalay, medical technologist in the Philippines, 7.5 in speaking. Congratulations, guys. Good job, babies. 7.5 in speaking. I'm happy. Now, Sir Joseph, why are you excited to announce something again? We are delighted to be opening 15 slots for Elite Focus. Yes. Elite Focus. Elite Focus, last time we have opened this, I think it was in December. December. Again, you know here at Elite Intellect, we do have programs and then we do not accept students unless there are students on that program. Okay, let's say there are 20 students on that program, we would wait for those 20 students to graduate first. And the good news about this one is Elite Focus students are already graduates for now. Yes, the months of waiting is over. Elite Focus is now accepting enrollees for this batch. So if you are a student who wants to focus more on a subtest, which is your weakness, let our specialists do a one-on-one -on -one coaching on your weakness. So Sir Joseph, what is Elite Focus about, okay? Elite Focus, guys, is unlimited review, one-on-one -on -one coaching on subtests of weaknesses of the student. This is the only program with which there is a one-on-one -on -one coaching on the subtest, okay? Let's say, ah, oh, Sir Joseph, I'm actually having a difficult time with reading. I'm having a difficult time with the with reading itself. Can I do a one-on-one -on -one coaching with that? Yes. That's elite focus because we're going to be focusing on that. Okay, and of course, live and recorded discussions, flexible schedule, unlimited coaching in speaking and writing, plus students practice library, all practice tests of Elite Intellect 9 is there, free handouts and Elite Book, the Blue Book, computer and mobile delivered classes, and the most convenient review. And of course, as an exclusive IFNG promo, okay? So guys, get the unlimited IELTS review with a limited one-on-one -on -one coaching for Elite Focus for only 3999 instead of 6500 that is almost half the price off. And if you enroll as a group of three and above, get it for only three, four, nine, nine. So, sir, I want to avail Elite Focus. How can I do this? Send a message to our Facebook page, okay? And then you type, uh, you type IFNG, and then the names of our the names of our admins, okay? Here are examples: IFNG Gladys or IFNG GL. There you go. IFNG Marvin. IFNG Mr. M. IFNG Jeffrey, IFNG Deadpool. There you go for you to avail Elite Focus. Mom Tanya is right there right now to entertain the 15 students who will become a part of the Elite Focus cluster. Okay, so I am excited because itong program na to guys, uh, let's say you enter Elite Focus and you're already really strong with the other subtests. Okay, you're really strong with speaking, but your listening, reading, and writing are your weaknesses. So we're going to focus on that. Okay, this is a personalized review okay this is a personalized review that's why it took us months before we open elite focus again so don't miss the chance for you to grab a slot for elite focus send a message on our facebook page right now and type ifng gladys or ifng gl ifng marvin or ifng mr m ifng jeffrey or ifng jeff or ifng deadpool to save a slot for you at Elite Focus. Okay, so see you soon in class, Elite Focus babies. Sir, sino nagme-mentor sa Elite Focus? Ako, tsaka si Mamsaya. <laughs> okay, so, 
plus of course last batch for the NCLEX plus IELTS. Okay, we are already about to close our NCLEX plus IELTS review because we are now going to go on to the concepts. No, so once we are already at the concepts, you would need to wait three months for you to be accommodated for our NCLEX plus IELTS review. So unlimited review on the NCLEX plus IELTS free book resources. That is six books in total. That's free for you. Free U World medical discussions. We have U World medical discussions. Yes, at our NCLEX review. Uh, free final coaching and mentoring, live and recorded classes, computer delivered NCLEX mock examinations, plus free handouts and elite notes. Okay, so it's instead of paying twenty five thousand, you're only going to be paying seven thousand nine hundred ninety nine for that two courses. Two courses, NCLEX plus IELTS. NCLEX plus IELTS. Um. Sir Joseph, I have a question. We're husband and wife. We're husband and wife. I already passed my IELTS, but I need an NCLEX. Okay. However, my wife would need to take the IELTS examination. Can I take the NCLEX review for myself? And can I give the IELTS review for my wife? Yes, you may. Yes, you may. So it's like buy one, take one for all. All right. So if you want to avail of our promos right now for NCLEX for a plus IELTS and Elite Focus, send a message to Bamtanya right now with the exclusive IFNG discount. So big, no malaki yung discount. So just type L, uh, IFNG Gladys or GL, IFNG Marvin or Mr. M, IFNG mm -hmm. Jeffrey, Jeff, or Deadpool. There you go. So see you in class very soon. My future children at Elite Intellect 9. You may send your messages right now on the Facebook page. It can be seen at the chat box of um, our Zoom meeting and, of course, at the chat box of our live link on to the Facebook page. Okay, so I'm <laughs> excited about Elite Focus. <laughs> Ito yung mga estudyante na ano, yung binubugbog ko lagi. Yung pag-reading ang usapan, naiiyak na sila, yes. Kasi we do one-on-one -on -one coaching with reading here. Okay. All right, guys. So, let's move on to our matching headings. <laughs> okay, so, when we look at matching headings, okay, or matching paragraphs, guys, some students, they tend to get utterly, totally confused with matching headings without knowing the magic trick. I will teach you a magic trick, okay? Some will not call it magic. Some will call it realistic, but I call it uh, systematic. Okay, so matching headings is simple. You don't have to be confused. Just follow these steps, okay? You may take a screenshot of this one if you would want to. Step one is to read the first sentence. Middle sentence is step two. And last sentence of the paragraph, that is step three. And then... What I would want you to remember is the question or the heading can be seen on the first, middle, and last part of the paragraph. Or it is the combination of the three. Ganito lang yan. If you're going to be interpreting it, guys, if you're going to be interpreting it, okay, the heading okay, can be seen on the first sentence or on the last sentence or on the middle sentence of the paragraph. Okay? That's the heading itself. Okay, so you just you don't have to read the entire paragraph. That's a waste of time. Just read the first, middle, and the last sentences. You will find the heading. Don't believe me? I'll show you an example. Okay, let me do screen share again. Oh, we have an annotation right here. Let me just clear the annotation, guys. Okay, so let's have a look see at this one. Ah, uh, I cannot click it. Okay, there we go. All right. So, you don't believe me that you can find, um, what do you call this? You can find the information on the headings themselves. Yeah, on the passages themselves. Let's take a look. Let's look at the first sentence of paragraph A first, okay? First sentence of paragraph A, okay. Big trees are incredibly important. Okay. Big trees are incredibly important ecologically. Okay. This allows them to sustain much of the animal life in the forest. Okay, remember that. Remember that. 
Big trees are incredibly important ecologically. This allows them to sustain much of the animal life in the forest. Now, let's take a look at our choices. Okay, how wildlife benefits from big trees. Factors that enable trees to grow to significant heights. How other plants can cause harm. Hmm. Sir Joseph, animal life, sustaining animal life, could it be possible that it matches with how wildlife benefits from big trees? Could it be possible? Yes, it is. Because the benefit here, guys, is sustaining the animal life in the forest. That is the benefit. Animal life is the same as wildlife. So answer for paragraph A is heading number one. <laughs> Sir Joseph, that's so amazing. I was able to see the answer by just reading the first and the last sentence. Yes, you will be able to find the answer by just reading the first and the last sentence or sometimes the middle sentence. Okay, now let's take a look at the next one. Let's read the first sentence and the last sentence of the next paragraph right here. Okay, all right. Only a small number of tree species have the genetic capacity to grow really big. Okay, it's talking about uh, growing. Okay, and then last sentence is, disrupt any of these and you can lose your biggest trees. Okay, so we're talking about disruption of the process. Okay, now it's about growing trees okay and then we have disruption of the process right here now let's go back to our choices okay factors that enable trees to grow significant heights oh my gosh sir joseph that's a fire sign right there the word grow right the word grow could it be possible excuse me sorry could it be possible that this is the answer right here hmm possible sir joseph okay what about this one? How other plants can cause harm. How other plants can cause harm. Okay. Uh, are we seeing plants here? No? Okay, now. I am a little bit for this idea that this is factors that enable trees to grow to significant heights. But I would need to look at the factors themselves if they are there. Okay? All right. So let's take a look if there are factors. Okay, the mightiest are natives of the northern and above big trees grow all over the world, from the tropics to the boreal forest of the high latitudes. To achieve giant stature, a tree needs three things. Ooh, three things. Could these be the factors? These three things right here, could these be the factors? Yes. Possibly, they are the factors, right? The right place to establish its seedling, good growing conditions, and lots of time with low adult mortality. These are the factors that we are talking about in the choice here. Factors that enable trees to grow to significant heights. So my answer for paragraph B would be heading number two. Ah! Oh, yeah. So, Joseph, my God, Natudens are now happy, right? It's now easier for us to look at the matching headings questions. Yes. Yes, guys. Matching headings are quite easy. The only thing that you have to remember for the matching headings is for you guys to look, okay? For you guys to look at the questions first, okay? For you, for you guys to look at the for you guys to look at the first sentences of the passages, the last sentence of the passages, and then after that you look at the heading. The heading can always be found on the first and the last sentence of the passages. So I apply ko yan sa reading practice ko. Then balitaan ko kayo. Excited na ako. Yes, Jade, go, go, apply it. It would make it easier for you. It would make it easier for you. Believe me. Once you apply these techniques right here, okay. All right, so look at that, guys. Uh, private message. Sir, question po, pwede po patingin ng notes. Ah, notes. Gusto, gusto yung nakikita talaga yung elite notes, ano? Okay, wait, let me show you. 
Okay, this is elite notes, guys. This is the notes of my students, okay? I write them personally, okay? I write them personally because it's much more, what do you call this, realistic when I do write down their classes when we are conducting our classes here. And they get a copy of this one every after the class, okay? So what does Elite Notes look like? Even on the NCLEX, we do this, okay? So look at that. That is an example of Elite Notes right there. It is basically the simplified discussions of Elite Intellect, okay? And you have the sample of the, this was our discussion this afternoon. Okay, and then the techniques for the bodies and my sample writing right here, I do write, I do write it personally, okay? On the discussions, on the spot, okay? Map, maps right there. All right, so this is elite notes, guys. No, ganito rin sa NCLEX po. Sa NCLEX naman, okay, let me show you the notes for NCLEX. Okay, hold on. For NCLEX naman, guys, here's an example of the notes for NCLEX. Okay, look at that. All right, for the NCLEX here, okay, also for NMCCBT, this is what the, what the students have for their handout. Okay, it's a simplification of the discussions like parts of the heart, anatomy, blood flow, two types of circulatory uh, blood. You have oxygenated and deoxygenated blood right there. Okay, so yes, when you enroll at Elite Intellect Time, these notes right here, they become a part of your handout. So, okay, and this is for all, for all. Okay, so yes, guys. All right, so, okay, let's take a look at the Colorful, hindi boring. Yes. Diba? We can get this one when we enroll po. Yes, Leonil. I always send elite notes to the students. No? Okay. Nagdo-drawing din yan si Mother. Oo din. <laughs> I love the notes. It's so colorful. Ganda. Thank you so much. Yes. I love the notes. Thank you, guys. No? Actually, I love... Uh, I love simplifying things for the students because I know that the IELTS is already complicated as it is. So yes, elite students, they always have elite notes. Okay? All right, guys. So instead of reading a PowerPoint, di ba? Parang lukohin ko lang kayo. Pag binasa ko yung PowerPoint, and isulat natin, di ba? Long method, always. More information on that one. Okay, yes, it is simplified. Sabi ni Ate Jenj. Okay, so... Most importantly, guys, okay? For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. Okay. So guys, if you are in a difficult situation right now, if you are a person who is encountering a lot of situations, know that the Lord knows his plans for you. These are not plans to harm you, not plans of evil, but rather he thinks of you on how you can get peace on your life and for you to have a better future and hope. And when you call on him, he listens to you. This is from Jeremiah 29 verse 11 to 12, one of the strongest promises of the Lord in the Bible. Okay, so let's pray for you guys for tonight. Heavenly Father, we'd like to thank Lord God for another opportunity for us to learn on the IELTS examination at IFNG. Lord, bless all the admins of IFNG. Bless Sir Jeffrey, Mr. M, and Mom Gladys every single day, Father. Provide for them, Father, because their heart is there with the service to help the students of the IELTS examination. Lord, I pray for all the students who have attended our, our live tonight and for those who will be watching this, for them to be blessed on their examination and for them to see their clear path on their IELTS examination. And of course, for the upcoming students of Elite Intellect 9, bless them, Lord, that they may have more productive learning at Elite Intellect 9. This is our prayer declaring success on the IELTS examination. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, guys. This is one of, uh, what do you call this? This is one of our marks here. No? Okay, guys. So I concur. That is the end of our discussion for tonight. So guys, if you still would want to, Oh, hold on. Uh, I think Sir, Sir Joseph has an announcement. What is it? Uh, Sir Jello has an announcement, okay? Oh, you have sent it to me on Facebook. Okay. Oh, so two scholars. Okay, two scholars of Rare Jow. Okay, congratulations to the two scholars of Rare Jow. Okay, so you have Judeline Basmayor, and of course, Mirasol Sarmiento. Congratulations, guys. Congratulations to the new scholars of Elite Intellect Line. And of course, soon, we'll be announcing 
five scholars from IFNG. I will be talking to your uh, admins about it. Okay, so see you guys so much. Congratulations, guys. Rare, thank you so much for uh, helping the students find their uh, laurels too on the examination. So welcome, fellow hatchlings. Okay, so guys, if you still want to avail our promo for the NCLEX, okay, and for the IELTS, okay, NCLEX plus IELTS, that is 7,999 instead of 25,000 and 3,999 instead of 6,500 for the IELTS message, our Facebook page right now. And of course, you may send your message to Mom Tanya. Thank you guys so much. These are all unlimited reviews. Before I return the floor to Mom Gladys, in behalf of Sir Jello, Mom Zaya, and Mom Tanya, this is your Mama Dragon, and I will see you again next Friday for another fun discussion here at IELTS. And you guys, if you have any requests for Mama to discuss, send it to the admins, okay? Send it to Mom Gladys, send it to Mr. M, send it to Sir Jeffrey so that they can coordinate with me on your uh, request. Okay, thank you guys so much. Thank you, admins. Mom Gladys, back to you, Mom Gladys. Thank you, Mama Gun. So, everyone, so as you can see, we have lots of surprises to our group. So, tune in, okay? So, Elite Squad, thank you very much. IFNG, thank you. So, good night from the Philippines. Good luck to your exams. Bye. Bye. Good luck, everyone. Good night.